make it really easy to edit that um, with a clean start. So just know again, we have, uh, we have um, 22 people on the line, which is great. Some of you may be having some technology challenges, so you can still reach out to June and I, or just know this is gonna be a little tricky. We're glad you tried it, uh, this platform, and we're happy to help you before the January call. Let's go to the next slide and then um, really talk a little bit about the purpose of today's lunch and learn. And uh, people can feel free to eat your lunch. I don't know. We will mute you if it, we start hearing chewing, but uh, feel free to, you know, drink water, eat your lunch. Okay. Um, so, Kristen and June, thank you so much for um, working with all of us to take care of the technology. And um, okay. thank you to everyone for participating. Oh, I thought you were just a call. Here, we, we need to mute a few folks here. Okay. What do you know about that? Uh, okay, I thought you were getting back about the can all give, all Do you want to give me the host responsibility, Jill, and I can just do that while you're speaking? Yes. Yeah, I can do it. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah. Let, me, let me go back to... Um, Sorry, I'm I'm trying to get back. This is the wild world of technology. But boy, when we, it works, when you get everything set up, it's so fabulous. Okay, just I'm just trying to get out to share. Um, oh, how to how to do? Go into participants. Click at participants. Manage participants. Uh, yeah. And, there. Okay, Kristen, you are host now. Okay. Okay. So you feel free to just go ahead and work on the slides and I'll get that. Okay. Well, um, again, thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Jill Peltzer from KU School of Nursing and I think I have um, talked to all of you via email or phone or in person. So today we are going to um, provide some updates about our cultural competency network initiative who we are as a network and how we can strengthen our network by getting to know each other. We also want to spend just a little bit of time talking about how we as a group can co-design the initiative in 2018. So what strategies do we all see as key to building our network and what elements of the network and the Cultural Competency Center are important for you and for your organization and communities. And we would like to have you help us recruit more people. So finding out from you if you are interested and committed, committed to joining us in this initiative and if you're willing to reach out to five of your colleagues and peers who are interested in cultural competency, diversity, inclusion, and other important topics relevant to health equity. And then to find out if there are other things that we want to focus on in the initiative. So the purpose of the Cultural Competency Initiative is to develop and engage a statewide community of individuals who are in, invested in creating and fostering a strong healthcare workforce that um, with the goal of health equity by promoting diversity and advocating for inclusion and social justice and the values that are congruent with cultural competency and high quality person-centered care. So our specific aims in this initiative are to develop effective hubs around the state of Kansas, support statewide learning, and create ne networks that foster relationship building across disciplines, communities, and regions. So how we are proposing to do this is um, through um, some sessions that we're going to have every month where we talk about cultural competency, we'll share success stories, we'll identify resources and approaches that can be useful in making sure that we as individuals are providing culturally competent care as organizations and then um, addressing cultural competency in our communities by addressing barriers and challenges. We are also going to um, share 
different tools and build skills for um, being able to collaborate across Kansas. So collaboration skills, how to use Google Drive, how to use um, Zoom for meetings within groups or what we're going to talk about later in onesies or two I'm sorry Tuesdays not onesies Tuesdays and then um, building this cultural competency network uh, so we can share resources we'll have a resource list strategies to expand our network and provide support with challenges so that we eventually have a regional um, network with um, in the state So Kristen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Well, we're gonna just uh, looking for questions. Kristen, were you? So if you have any questions about what Jill said, uh, make sure that you have your chat open. Sometimes when you go to screen share, it doesn't show the chat and you can either do the exit full screen or you can click on the three little dots down at the, in the black bar where it says more and that will open up your chat box because the chat box is really important for communicating uh, because you can write in something in there at any time write a question that you have that uh, Jill might want to answer or um, any reactions you have to what Jill's talking about um, please you can either put it in the chat or you can just speak out so you have two different ways to communicate so are there any questions you add this, anything? Nope. Yeah. are there any questions or comments at this point otherwise june will talk a little bit about why networks are different than you know more uh traditional um sit and get kind of content stuff any questions you can use your mic or you can put them in the chat and you can do that anytime during the whole talk yeah so we're hopeful we see some something in the in the chat now and before the, our next call in january we're, we'll work with each of you to find a really good technology solution because a lot of the way this works we're trying to not only give you content information and great tools like assessments which i i know many of you are interested in but also to build a network so if there's something that you need that you'll be able to find it from among the 50 or so people that have really expressed interest in this topic. Um, and so um, uh, that's what we're, why it's so important for you to, if you can, uh, be on visually, just the research is saying when you actually see someone else as opposed to just being a black screen, um, you can build a relationship a lot faster and deeper and that relationship's more likely to be useful to you in the future. And so that's why one thing we'll really work on uh, trying to help you find a laptop uh, or a computer with a, with a um, camera on it and speakers and a microphone. Okay, so why, why are we trying to help you build a network? Because we don't have all the answers now um, and and a lot of things that you need, uh, for example, let's say that you have a home lung pa patient uh, coming into your clinic who doesn't speak English. How can you quickly find an interpreter for that person to maybe join you via Zoom to uh, help uh, make sure that, that you're understanding what that individual's needs are? In, and they're able to speak in their language to another language speaker. So those are the kinds of things that are going are probably coming up in your your work, um, you know, every year. And so what we want to try to do is work together to really build the set of resources for different ethnic or cultural groups, um, and also so there's specialized services, um, and and. What we'd love now is if you in the chat can also think, why do you need a network for something, cultural competency? Why is it so particularly so important? Uh, I think another thing that I came up with is the, um, being able to get ideas from each other for, for what's worked uh, in your organization. And uh, because we don't really have time to invent this all ourselves. And it's great to be able to learn from each other. And I, I sure that all of you have faced challenges at, at times around this, the, this whole issue of cultural competency. And 
what, what a network's particularly good is being there to support you and help you think through challenges that come up. Um, so I think also that um, there are uh, many other reasons why being a network is so important. And, and I'd really love it if any of you could just speak out and tell me some things that you want to see from a network uh, or, or just write it in the chat. And you can continue doing this while we're talking, but you know why? Why is it a really important um, uh, for you to have a network on this issue? Are there particular things that you've come across that you haven't been able to maybe figure out yourself, and it would be useful to have a network for? Okay, so what do we mean when we say a network? Well. Um, a colleague and I looked at over 500 networks and uh, identified those that were most successful um, in, um, in collaboration and innovation. And it looked like this. You see, it had a core of people who were very diverse, um, all, but all who knew about each other. Uh, and then a whole thing we call a periphery around the outside, which is where, you know, you're connected to, say, a, a Hmong interpreter or um, people in other communities who are working on some of these same kinds of issues. But most networks don't start there. In just a minute, you're going to be able to see our network because we took the answers from that little survey that we sent out. I, guess it was a couple weeks ago and we made it into a network map and we'll be able to see that in just a minute but networks go through stages like uh, you can see in the second one the hub and spoke um, you know usually there's an organization or an individual who starts reaching out around a particular issue and, and building relationships and I I think you all might have a suspicion about who that might be in our group <laughs> She's smiling right now. I'll give you a clue. But the other thing is that it, if you don't start connecting all the people, like all the people on this call, if you all don't get to know each other, you stay a hub and spoke, and, and you won't gain the benefit of the knowledge of all the other people in the network. So often you start trying to create clusters around things like interest, which is something we asked you, or around other different kinds of activities or around regions. And those new clusters help people who didn't know each other before get to know each other. And that's how you get to this smart network. So we're going to try to help us all. We're going to try to create a smart network. Where are we now? We are right here. And this is the map um, that represents the people that took the survey. Some of you didn't take it, and I think Jill's going to resend out the link so that you can take the survey. And your name may be on this, uh, but you may not have any connections. Um, and um, you know, we're, we really want to see all the turquoise uh, squares in here. We want to see them become. Um, we want to see them become different colors. So the colors on these squares are the interests of people. And so the, I think the people who uh, have red squares are interested in, in assessments to find out how culturally competent your program or your organization is. I can't remember all the other ones. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. But what, what I'd love for you right now, and I'd love for you to speak out, um, is what do you, can you, what can you tell from this map? What, what can you learn from this map? Remember we said there was a stage, the scattered clusters, hub and spoke, and then the multi-hub clusters and the smart network. Where is this network? What can you tell us about this? So please unmute and tell us what you see in this map. Well, somebody just be brave. What do you notice about this map? Is there a hub? I'd love uh, Angie to say, I can tell you we're really looking at the map or uh, Anthony, you seem to be really looking at that map. Which is, what, what, what do you notice? So uh, this is Angie and Nanette. It looks like to us that it is a hub and spoke really at this point. So and who's the hub? Jill. Okay, so Jill's the hub, and this is not a bad 
thing at all right now. We, you know, she has reached out to many, many people uh, around this issue. So we see that it's a hub. Okay, do you notice anything else? Are there any clusters of people that seem to know each other? They all know each other. Angie, you yep. can keep going, or Anthony, or someone else try, share, wait, what do you think? Are there little groups anywhere? So it looks like when we're looking at the map, it looks like there's some clusters over there to the right. Okay, over here. Yeah. So I'm going to now go on to the next slide where I've already kind of pointed out. So yes, there's a cluster over on the right. And uh, where's that from? Does anybody know? Is it is a region? It, it's uh, Washburn University. Awesome. Okay, Washburn University. So, uh, not surprising people know each other. Okay, how about this one down at the bottom? We've got Brian, Terry, Brenda, Kathy, Chris, Kathleen. I think, I think Brian's on the call. Is there a way that that group might be connected, Brian? Ah, Brian's typing it in Hayes Medical or F8. Okay, great, great. So people know each other again through sort of an organization. How about this one up at the top? We've got Deanna, Christina, Barb's, Susan, Hoffman, Vicki, Gina, and Gigi. What's that connection? That connection is uh, KU. Uh, so the School of Nursing and the uh, Health System. Okay, great. So we both, this network that we have is a hub and spoke right now, and that's fine for right now, but we want to move to that smart network. And we've got three clusters. Now, look at the interesting thing. And what we're going to try to do is one way to, to start bringing those clusters. We want to overlap those clusters. And so, for example, if we got, if some of the people who pick that uh, assessment topic uh, in, in each circle, you see there's red people in each circle, and if they just had a conversation, all of a sudden the network would be a lot more connected. And that's what we're going to try to do during all these sessions. We're going to try to let you get to know each other based on interests that you have. Um, and here's a little map that shows some of those interests and we're going to talk later about how you we have a listing of people's names and emails and their interests and you can see that right now people in those interest groups are not really co very connected to each other and so encouraging you to pick out you know one person from your interest group and try to maybe have a phone call with them uh, before our next call. So you see what fun maps are, and we're going to be doing this this mapping, um, you know, just every couple months or maybe even every month. We'll kind of try to grab from you any new connections you've made, and uh, make some new maps so you can see how we're developing uh, as a network. Okay, so Kristen, great, great. So one of the things we're going to try now is to um, put you in small groups, as June said, probably. Starting in 2008, we'll start clustering you sometimes by groups that share a common interest. But um, today we're just gonna do a, a random um, assignment. And so, um, June, can you go to the next slide? Here's what we'd like you to do. The, the breakout group will be about 15 minutes long and you'll have uh, four, other peop four or five people in your group. Um, we'd like you to take a minute to introduce yourself, talk a little bit about um, where you're located, what you do, why did you choose this group? And then we have three questions that we would love you to be able to discuss. And so there may, it may be really helpful to have somebody that kind of helps um, remind people what the questions are. They'll be in a note, um, they'll, we'll put them in the chat and we'll also put them in a document where you can take some notes. So one question is, what are your interests in this prop? project you know how do you think you're going to use the information uh, take it back to others we're going to ask we'd ask question two what suggestions do you have for how to make this project really work for you we'll share some of what we've heard already and what our plans are but again what a network approach does is it tries to respond 
to the whole and figure out how to get the most energy happening. At, at, so we're always going to be asking, what do you need? What, what would make this work for you? Are you willing to um, step in and convene a couple of people around something? And then who else should be involved? Um, Jill said this from the beginning. We have a great number on. Maybe 23 is perfect. If all of you say thumbs up, we're going to commit to um, move into this um, process for the six months in 2008, the first six months. If, at, though you're also thinking, gosh, there's somebody else in my community or my organization I should invite so that I have a buddy as I go through this, um, we want to talk about recruiting. There's a couple more. One of the things, and again, we in our group, um, there was somebody who said, oh, I was just coming to get some information on this. I didn't realize that there wasn't going to be a specific content piece around cultural competence. So I just, I want you to know that, you know, again, this is still, we're trying, it's emerging and there will be content pieces every time next time, but we want to make sure that we hear what you have to, what, what your interests are in. And, and some of this, some of the breakout groups will allow people to be together around topics they care about and the notes helps us keep getting that kind of feedback. I'm curious from other groups, group one or group two or group three, what was your conversation like? How was it? to be in those small groups. What about the group one? I think that we were group, group one, but... Um, Can you tag Shane, somebody else? Your Anne want to share? I, I think what we spent quite a bit of time kind of introducing ourselves, and then we talked about what we... Um, kind of how, why we arrived at this group or what what or why we're interested in the group and and um kind of shared what we want to be able to take home or take back to our to our organizations or in or individual relationships from this group and um angie shared quite a bit she's in the she's in the ems sector and so transporting people and it's her job to communicate with the ER as to what kind of patients they may have and so she's going to be sharing um, a link to this group with the ER because they could maybe benefit um, from some of the resources here in, in networking and um, I'm mostly interested in uh, providing education to future nurse practitioners about uh, social determinants of health and promoting health equity and cultural competence and really strength, strengthening that in our curriculum. And that's about as far as we got. Jill, Shane, or Angie, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Um, your guys' survey that you guys sent out, I never did get that. I just got this link to join um, your guys' virtual information on the cultural competencies so if you want to send me that I will type in my email and that would be great and then I can help you with that and any advertising or flyers that you need me to get out I will be more than happy to do that also great thank you Angie that not everyone who's on the call today did receive the survey I um, I reached out through um, one of our organizations I, and I should have done it sooner, it, it came to me late, about disseminating information about the webinar. So I'm really appreciative that there were so many of you that joined today at a very late notice, and we'll make sure we get the survey out to you guys. Thank you. Yes, thank you. If there's other groups that want to share, maybe I'd ask you to do that in the chat. And thanks, Anne, for sharing your group's experience. You know, the first time or so is always a little bit bumpy, but I think, um, you know, we're committed to, for sure, continue to do as breakouts. And even though it's a lunch and learn, like part of what we're learning really happens is in small groups where people have a common <laughs> interest or they just want to get to know each other. So that's definitely part of the design that will continue even though it's over the lunch hour. And um, I think we'll shift maybe, let's talk about Tuesdays, um, June, so that people that know they want to join us for the series know how they can start finding others and having little virtual you know, coffee chats. Um, and then we'll just move into the remaining slides, um, Jill. Okay, just a minute and I will get the, Unfortunately, here, um, here we are. Um, hold on, I'm just uh, trying to bring, do this screen sharing a minute and having to move a few things around. 
Um, but here we've got it now. Okay, so um, basically what we're encouraging you to, uh, we will be sending this uh, link. I will also put it in the chat. Um, maybe it'd be easier for, okay, I can put it in the chat. And this is a link to the names of everybody who's expressed interest uh, so far. Now, uh, are you able to click on that chat? Maybe you could tell me in the chat if you can actually click on this link. In my uh, chat, it's blue, and you can just click on it, and it'll take you to the page that has everybody's name, organization, email, and their interests. And it's those of you like Angie who haven't taken it yet, we'll be sending out a very quick survey and you'll be able to, your name will then go into this list um, and will be part of it. Now, I'm really encouraging you to, I mean, this Zoom has been revolutionary for many, many organizations and networks and you can use it free for 40 minutes. Um, as many 40 minute calls as you want. And so here's the link to try to get on Zoom or maybe use Skype or maybe you're most comfortable with the phone, but trying to get to know people in this group, uh, especially those who are interested in the same thing that you are, like um, someone mentioned education. And you can see here that uh, there are several people interested in uh, education related to cultural competencies. So, what next, Kristen? We're running pretty much out of time. Do we, yeah, I do think, we just move to the project timeline? Yep. Yeah, I think, Jill, maybe why don't you talk about what's going to happen, and then we can be in touch with people in between now and January. Okay. Yeah, because I we know we'd, we're almost out of time. So what we are planning is to have a series of monthly lunch and learns that we will be starting in January. Um, it will be the second Tuesday from noon to one. And um, as Kristen and June had mentioned before, we can work with you individually on some of the technology so that you um, can just come right in and um, there will be content uh, around cultural competency and determinants of health um, issues. And then again, opportunities to get into our small groups. Um, and then in the summer, we'll celebrate what we have learned and done together in building our network and identify next steps. Just one other thing is that, you know, some of you are mentioning particular interests and what we can do with you is to organize, maybe even bringing people from other states uh, in around, let's say, you know, how do you incorporate um, um, cultural competency um, practices into a nurse's education, we could find a small group to talk about that mm -hmm. uh, between these monthly sessions. So that we're meant to be responsive. We want to help you learn and uh, find others who can who can provide you the information, the resources that you need. So that's just an additional piece that is part of this. So I think the last thing, Kristen, are you going to? Do this sure. one. So I mean, I think if we if we got everyone's technology started and we had the twenty two or twenty five that we're on today, I would be doing a happy dance here in my little house. But we also uh, feel free if there are others that you think would be valuable that would find this valuable um, to come on. The rhythm will be more predictable starting the January through June sessions in terms of you'll always get a content piece, you'll always have a breakout with pe something that people that care about something similar or to apply the ideas and we'll start sharing back success stories as well as challenges and helping each other. We're going to send out the resources to you in a link. Please be in touch with us um, if there's something that's not working for you or if you really feel strongly. Send Jill any names if you're going to um, if you are inviting others so we make sure just like with Angie's situation that we're getting information to the people who might want to have it mm -hmm. and um, Jill I can't remember if there was a specific way that people would register for the uh, the ninth is that going to be through zoom they'll just officially register for the call yes great yes. so through zoom, so I, I yeah. will be sending that um, the link out for the um, January webinar soon. It'll be yeah. this week. 
And the reason that's helpful is we will prioritize and make sure those folks that are registered have all their technology bugs figured out before the call. Because today was a little bumpy with a lot of people coming on with a range of um, technology supports. And I deal, that will get easier, but we'll make it a priority for everyone that registers to at least have had a conversation with you and figure out what's the best solution so that you can all get the best out of it that you want. Um, I think that's it. I'm really happy to see so many names and some of you faces. I understand that not everyone can be on video, but I think that's it. We will yeah. uh, be in touch. Jill, June, anything to close? Just thank you so much, especially everyone that um, got the uh, notice today from AHEC about the webinar and then you took the time to, to join us. So really appreciative of our large group. Um, yeah. with I us. only saw one people, one person brave enough to eat lunch. So next time I want to see some sandwiches, some soups, <laughs> some slurping, you know, I want to hear some <laughs> healthy I eating. Mean, you have to eat, you know, so. The wonderful thing about Zoom is you can, you can be yourself here. You know, that it, it, it's a, a, a place where you can really just be yourself. And uh, so again we'll see you all soon we'll be in touch with most of you to make sure the technology works uh you there is a folder that we're going to be sending you a link to that has the powerpoint if you want to share that with anyone it also has the addresses in it so we'll make sure you get all that information and we'll probably be talking to you a little bit more about what you want from this because we really do want to make this fit your needs um, so you'll be hearing from us. Thanks so much. Okay. And Angie. Thank Thanks you so much. Have a Thank great you. day. Thanks. Bye, Angie.